Hey there folks, it's been quite a while. Welcome back to Nightwatch A Journey, a devlog series where we as a community create our very own single player RPG using the power of the Unreal Engine. Today we've got a lot of neat stuff to cover, like our newly implemented heads up display system courtesy of Monoleg. There are still a lot of changes we gotta make to it, but we'll go over that later in the video. We've also begun work on the other side of Edenvale Village with our sights set on the creation of Edenvale Mine. We ported over our armor system from our old character blueprint, and finally, we began work on our magic system using the dynamic combat system by... Well, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Using this UE4 creator's dynamic combat system as a template. As with the new hood and UI, we've got a lot of changes we want to make, but both these systems provided us with great jumping off points. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the episode. We've kept you waiting long enough. So starting off today's episode, we're going to talk about our new user interface. Man was this a pain to integrate into our project. As I've said before, when using code or assets from the marketplace, it's not like you can just copy and paste them into your project. There's a huge misconception surrounding how easy it is to integrate these assets. It takes a lot of time and a lot of bug fixing. And as I said in previous videos, and as I've demonstrated with stuff like store-bought animations or world assets, Anything we buy from the store will be documented in our YouTube homepage for complete transparency and for full credit to go to the original asset creators who deserve it most. While these store-bought assets can be a pain to integrate into existing projects, once they're up and running, they can save us small developers a crazy amount of time in coding, animating, modeling, and a lot of other stuff that goes into making a game. Anyways, yeah, so integrating these assets took a lot longer than expected, and that's why this video took forever to make. So back to the user interface. This system, created by Monoleg, channel link in the description, comes with a lot of super cool features that'll work well with what we're going for here in Nightwatch. First off, it comes with a compass that I find to be very reminiscent of the one in Elden Ring or Skyrim, both of which I rely on heavily for information. How it works is we place a beacon anywhere in our game world that basically acts as our north pole. Whenever we're facing this direction, the compass will read that we're facing north, and will change trajectory based on our rotation relative to our north pole beacon. The compass can also display things like quest, location, and NPC markers, even though we haven't added any of those to the game yet, uh, work in progress. This leads us to our new minimap. The minimap can be used to show the same markers as the compass, just relative to the space surrounding the player. I mean, it's a minimap, not much more to say. I'm sure you guys know how it works. Moving on, we've integrated our health, stamina, and magicka systems into the user interface by Monoleg. This was relatively simple to do, which was a nice change of pace. The new user interface system also supports hotkey functionality for quickly switching between favorited items like different weapons or spells. I think it's safe to say we've been neglecting the expansion of Edenvale Village for some time now. If you ask me, I think it's more important to nail down the main gameplay mechanics first so that you aren't distracted when you're creating the game world. For example, if I created a game world before I started working on our parkour system, once I did finally finish the parkour system, I would have to go back to all those previously created environments and edit them to work with our new movement style. However, the way I'm doing it now, when I create a new environment, my gameplay mechanics, for the most part, have already been set in stone. This means I can tailor the world to fit the way our character moves and interacts with the environment. It just helps us streamline the process of world creation, and allows us to avoid a sort of disconnect between how the character moves around the world, and how that world is designed. So if you recall episode 12, when we created our town layout on Incarnate, the south side of town was going to be home to the fishery, the healer, and the merchant hub. Since then, we haven't done much with that side of town, so now that all our gameplay mechanics are in the game, minus swimming, which we're still working out the kinks with, I think it's safe for us to continue work on the game world. With the parkour, enemy AI, and friendly AI, as well as combat systems complete, we can finally start adding some life to our world, as well as begin working on our first dungeon. In the game footage, you may notice I've thrown some simple livestock characters here and there, such as chickens and goats. They don't really do much besides walk around and eat grass, but luckily we created a routine system for our NPCs in episode... 
Honestly, I don't remember the episode. It was after episode 13 and before episode 17 if you want to go see it. Anyways, coding animal behavior is as simple as copy and pasting in our human behavior code and making a few simple changes, so it shouldn't take too long. As you can see from the background footage, our armor system has finally made its return. If you happen to catch episode 17, you know that we reworked our character blueprint from the ground up using the advanced locomotion system, and we weren't quite finished migrating all of our gameplay mechanics over to our new blueprint. One of these mechanics was the ability to equip and swap out armor. Now it's back. Right now, the system just equips random interchangeable pieces of armor to each armor slot whenever we launch the game, because I haven't completely integrated our armor system with Monoleg's inventory system yet. It should be easy though, all I have to do is swap out some model references from his placeholder assets to my own. So from here on out, no more naked characters. <laughs> Next on the list is our new magic system. Big shout out to... I'm just gonna call him Gregory. For his dynamic combat system pack in the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Link to his channel is also in the description. So the part of his combat bundle that we're using is the mage combat. We already created our own melee and bow and arrow combat systems for a game that I'm quite happy with, so we'll be sticking with those. However, when I began to make the magic combat system for Nightwatch, I remembered that my fiance bought me the dynamic combat bundle from the UE4 Marketplace as a gift. I can't remember the occasion, but what I did remember was that the magic system in the bundle would serve as a great foundation to build off of. It comes with a variety of spells such as a raging tornado for whipping enemies around the battlefield, fireballs to scorch enemies in combat, a teleportation spell to quickly zip around your environment and cross large gaps that you couldn't normally jump across, an explosion spell that, well, explodes things, and a healing spell for quickly getting your character back into fighting shape in the heat of combat. Now granted, the animations and effects for these spells are a little rough around the edges, but like I said, the intention isn't for us developers to just slap these systems into our games and call it a day. They're meant to save time and money and act as a foundation on which to build our systems. We've already got new effects for all of the spells and plenty more cool spells we'd like to add in future devlogs. I think for the next episode, we're going to divert a lot more of our time and energy toward world design and finishing Edenvale Village, so we can get back to work on building interiors and the thing I'm most excited about, our first dungeon, the Eden Company Mine. But until then, thanks to everyone for watching, and we hope to see you again on the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more updates on Project Nightwatch. See you next time, folks.